Welcome back. All right, so in my continuing look at teams that have missed the playoffs, New Jersey. So I skipped this yesterday. I uh, had the board made up a couple days ago and thought, all right, I'll, I'll wait. And, and so yesterday I had a couple other videos I did instead. Uh, now we're back into this playlist. So the New Jersey Devils, uh, disappointing season is one way to put it. Kind of an understatement to call it a disappointing season, though. 38-39-5 uh, and five record for 81 points. Last year, 112. So a drop of 31 points. And a lot of that can be explained by Dougie Hamilton's absence. Also by the fact that they, they made their blue line a little bit greener in the offseason last summer. Uh, a little bit less experience, a little bit younger. And this is a team that uh, is, I would think, going to be looking to add veterans, especially on the blue line this summer, and maybe a veteran netminder as well. We'll see. We'll see what they end up doing. So their draft lottery odds, there's a 3.5% chance they make the internet angry and get the right to draft Macklin Celebrini first overall. There's a 3.7% chance that they're going to draft second and a 0.1% chance they draft third. Then 10th uh, spot, that's probably where they're going to end up. 73.3% chance there. 11th, an 18.4% chance they end up there. And a 12 or a 0.9% chance they end up drafting 12th, so highly unlikely they get jumped by a couple of teams. And we're four days away from seeing the draft lottery, and then I won't have to put up the lottery odds anymore. I'll just be putting up where teams are drafting. Uh, but for New Jersey, it's highly likely they'll be drafting 10th. But I would find it entertaining if they drafted first, just because um, I can imagine the internet would take that really well. Uh, so the coaching situation in, in New Jersey is still unclear. Uh, Travis Green is still there as the interim coach. Uh, apparently has had the right to talk to other teams about coaching vacancies, like for instance, Ottawa. Uh, and they're interviewing other coaching candidates as well. They want to have a coach named and in place by the draft. That's the deadline Tom Fitzgerald has for it. That makes some sense. Uh, Tom Fitzgerald, the general manager, uh, there's been some... Uh, discussions here on the channel about the job he's done um, I don't have to get into that here but again it feels like the blue line was really weakened uh, this season and that's something that just isn't going to work in the National Hockey League you need to have a good veteran uh, group on the blue line you can have rookies but you, you need to have good veterans to, to sort of anchor uh, your blue line and keep everything together. Their goal scoring wasn't bad, 14th overall. Their their goal scoring was fine. Uh, their offense was fine most of the season, uh, but their goals allowed 27th, and that comes down to goaltending and it comes down to defense, and, and that's where things fell apart from them. So their playoff drought is just the one season, and they want to make sure it stays one season, and with the right moves, there's no reason this team can't be a playoff team. Uh, they did start the season 6-2-1, and one, and then they lost 7 out of 9. And from then going forward, they were just, it, it, it just didn't look like they were going to make it, and they didn't. Uh, but they just, they never really got rolling. After that good start, it just fell apart, and, and they never they never got it back on track. Um, so we'll get into the cap space part of things in a little bit here, but I wanted to talk about their top three scorers and then some young players as well. Uh, Jesper Bratt, 82 games, 37 goals, 56 assists, 93 points. So last season, Bratt got off to a really good start. Petered out a bit in the second half of the season, still had good numbers. This year he had a really good start and kept it up. He did it for the full season, and I don't know if Bratt does it again. This feels like a career year, but maybe. Maybe Bratt can hit 95 points next year. We'll see. Uh, maybe he pushes 100. But one player that's supposed to be pushing 100 every year in New Jersey is Jack Hughes. The expectations with him are really high. Uh, this year, injuries definitely set him back. 67 games, 27 goals, 47 assists, 74 points. If they're really and truly going to get back in the hunt, Hughes has to be 100%, and they have to uh, make sure that the defense is uh, good enough to handle things, too. While he's got the scoring up, you have to make sure you're keeping the puck out of your own net, too. Uh, Nico Heischer, 71 games, also 27 goals, same as Jack Hughes. 40 assists, 67 points for Heischer. Excellent two-way forward. Um, Selkie nominees haven't come out yet, like the Selkie finalists. I would think he's sure is going to get some consideration. I don't think he's a favorite yet, but we're not far off. Uh, he sure has done a really good job, I think, over his career of becoming the forward that he was expected to be. And eventually, I think voters are going to take more notice. Uh, so when we get into the younger players, and again, this is 22 and younger. Luke Hughes, 82 games, 9 goals, 38 assists, 47 points. Quinn Hughes has said he thinks that Luke had a better first season in the NHL than he did. 
Um, I don't necessarily agree with that. However, uh, Quinn Hughes had his defensive struggles that first year. The same as I've seen people complaining about with Luke Hughes. It's it's not strange for a defenseman to struggle when they're first in the NHL, especially if they're on the younger side. So it's nothing to be concerned about yet. Uh, Dawson Mercer, 82 games, 20 goals, 13 assists, 33 points for Mercer. Uh, I think Mercer's capable of 30 goals. I think he's capable of 60 points. And really, really good player. We'll see whether or not his totals jump back up next year. Uh, Holtz played all 82 games. His ice time was always a conversation with New Jersey fans. Uh, some feeling that uh, both coaches kind of did him dirty. But 82 games, 16 goals, 12 assists, 28 points. I think the fact Holtz still gets 16 goals in a season where there's all that discussion about ice time and, and just line mates and everything i think the fact he still reaches 16 goals tells you he's got the offense there he could easily double that goal total with the right coach and the right line mates uh nemitz 60 games three goals 16 assists 19 points with hughes and nemitz this is a really good uh one two in terms of anchors on that blue line but they they need to have a good blue line to round it out as well and that's where things kind of fell apart for new jersey this year and then the goaltending. So the goaltending, so many different goaltenders going through. But we end the season with Allen and Kakinen as the goaltending tandem. Allen ends up going 6-6-1 six, six, and one with a 900 safe percentage. And I think he stays in New Jersey. Um, Kakinen 1-4 with a 9.23 safe percentage. So Kakinen didn't get the wins. He didn't get the goal support. But he got the safe percentage up, which is good because coming out of San Jose, I don't know, trade his value on the market, probably not great. Uh, the numbers he put up in New Jersey could turn some heads. He may very well find himself signed on July 1st somewhere. I don't think he returns to New Jersey. I think the Devils are going to give Dawes and Schmid a chance to see who's going to be the backup for Jake Allen if that's the direction they're going to take. I think that would make some sense, uh, but we'll see how things go. And and the goaltending was definitely an issue. Uh, the team with a 886 save percentage, the league sitting at an 898 save percentage. And that average for the league is low. Uh, 898 is low, but the 886 New Jersey put up, you just, you can't, you can't overcome that. And it, it definitely affects your attack as well when you're scared about allowing goals at the other end. So maybe you don't take some of those chances uh, offensively because you're worried that if that puck gets turned over, it's just going right into your net. Now, they're pending unrestricted free agent list. Nobody really earth-shattering on this list. Uh, Nosek, fourth liner. Brendan Smith, bottom two defensemen for them. McDermott, enforcer. Uh, D. Simone, uh, bottom two defensemen as well. It was pretty good in New Jersey if they decided to keep him. Probably around league minimum would do it. Uh, Kakinen, as mentioned, goaltender who had uh, not a great win-loss record, but pretty decent numbers there. Uh, Willman. Willman came in at points this year. Again, league minimum would probably get that done if they decide to keep him around. We'll see. And then on this side, you have Tierney and you have Kincaid. Yes, Kincaid uh, under contract with the Devils, expiring contract this summer. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Keith Kincaid in a Devils jersey, that's kind of, that's how that works. Uh, then they're pending restricted free agents. Uh, Dawson Mercer could eat into their salary cap space. But I don't think you'll eat into it that much. I do. I just wonder, are they going to sign him to a two- or three-year extension, or are they going to go long-term? If they go seven or eight years, odds are the cap hit will be higher. If they go two or three years, it'll probably be lower. Uh, and then that would be Mercer betting on himself that in those two or three years from now, uh, he'll be able to really blow up his totals and, and end up asking for a ton more money at the end of it. That's the risk you take now with a shorter-term contract. Uh, you have Nolan Foote as well. Nolan Foote. I would think league minimum keeps him around. Uh, Hataka, who of course came over from San Jose, fill in defenseman. Uh, and then you've got Dawes and Schmidt. And both of them, I think, you know, probably just a one or a two year deal. No need to go crazy. No need to give anybody a long term contract. Um, yeah, uh, those are those are the goalies who are fighting to become that goalie of the future for the New Jersey Devils. Uh, I, I do like Dawes. I understand that the organization likes Schmidt a little better. We'll see who ends up winning out and getting that backup job in the fall. I think Allen sticks around. Kakinen's probably gone. And then, you know, the winner of Dawes or Schmidt ends up being the backup, unless they look in another direction. Say a Markstrom defense, uh, 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 direction. Uh, Markstrom, of course, there was the discussion of whether or not he was going to go to the Devils at the deadline, and that he almost did, and then he didn't. And I've seen... 
Uh, people saying too, oh, the Devils shouldn't go for Markstrom. I will say this, Markstrom's 34 years of age, so the contract's a little risky, but Markstrom had excellent numbers this year. Uh, the advanced numbers were great, and New Jersey doesn't have a goaltender of that caliber at this point. So if they're able to swing a deal for Markstrom, I think that would make a lot of sense. I know Gibson's name gets brought up a lot. Basically, if a team has a goaltender that's available, the media is going to time to New Jersey because everybody knows New Jersey could probably use a little bit of help in net. Um, and in terms of prospects on the way, I went with Seamus Casey, defenseman, put his name on the board. But basically, New Jersey's a team that has already uh, acquired a lot of good young talent, a lot of good young prospects, and a lot of them are already in the lineup. You know, whether it's Luke Hughes, Nemitz, Holtz, Mercer, Jack Hughes, Heesher, Brat. These guys have all been really good um you know, on their way up type players not that long ago, and they're all now trying to hold down the fort and get this team back to the playoffs. So the question I have for people watching this is, uh, considering that the Devils have $19,973,603 in cap space on July the 1st, what do they do with that? Because it's not going to get eaten up by the players that are pending UFAs or pending RFAs. Uh, you you got to think Dougie Hamilton should be back next year, should be 100%. So what do you add? Do you take that money and say, you know what, we're going to put that money into a big-name defenseman? Or do you do, do you do that via trade? Or do you do that, do you do that on July the 1st? Just slow down. There you go. But if, if you had that opportunity to make this team better, would you take that cap space? Would you keep it? Would you spend it? What would you spend it on? Uh, and would it be via trade or via free agency? There you go. Much better worded. Uh, let me know your thoughts. Thank you guys so much for all your support as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. I will talk to you guys again soon.